Two years ago, I sold everything to travel full time. I sold my house, my car, most of my possessions, and honestly, it was one of the best financial moves I've made in my 30s. Since then, I've hiked Patagonia, I've surfed in Panama, I've taken my mom to cross Machu Picchu off her bucket list, I've spent an entire season snowboarding, and I'm not a travel influencer. I don't even make as much money as you might think. So today, I'm gonna tell you exactly how much this lifestyle costs, how much you need to earn, and you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between. I'm Linda, and at 33, I decided to sell everything to travel the world and live my bucket list. Adulthood hasn't really been the same since. There's lots of ways you can get started and you just have to figure out which one's best for you and what's going to make the most sense for you. So one thing you can do is have savings that are going to be enough for you to live off of. and. This doesn't have to be an insane amount, basically just enough to sustain you. I know several people that travel you know, for a year or two without working, just living off of savings. They tend to live very cheaply. One way that you can do that, which actually I kind of helped support some of my travel with, is selling your house, selling your possessions, selling the things that you, know, you don't actually need once you're living a full-time travel life. Another one is to get a job that allows you to travel. So, you know, not everything has to be online work. There are plenty of jobs that you can do that are going to be location flexible. Let's call it location flexible. Um, and that's something like working at a hostel reception, being a masseuse, being um, a tour guide. These are all things where usually you have, you know, a certain set of time that you'll have to be there to, you know, fulfill the contract. But then after that, you're free to choose and go somewhere else if you want to. And then the last option, which is what I do, is to work online. Especially after COVID, a lot of companies are sticking with the remote work policy. And that just means there's so many more opportunities out there for those jobs, to get those jobs, and to start living location independently and traveling full time. I got started being a virtual assistant, which is nothing glorious. It's nothing glorious, it's nothing glamorous is what I meant to say. Basically, I do database management, I handle calendar appointments, book travel, all of those things that you know don't require a massive skill set to get started with. And that's what I started with about eight or nine years ago. But there's so many options these days. For example, you know. This guy teaches kids English, and this guy is a software engineer. So there's lots of different opportunities to get out there and use your skills to work online. And last but not least, you definitely need to have an open mind and be able to think outside the box a little bit. And if you want some inspiration for starting to have that kind of adventurous mindset, click the link in the description and get my five day email series to a more adventurous adulthood. I've done the whole settled life. I've owned a house, I've paid the mortgage, I've had to fix the dishwasher that broke, I've you know paid my car lease and every other bill that comes along with that. And I easily spend about $2,000 a month just on the basics like that. I could never get ahead of myself, I could never really start to save money. It was just really frustrating for me to be honest. So. I just thought like that whole settled adulthood life, it just wasn't really working out for me. And so when I said that this full-time travel life has actually been a really good financial decision, it really was because I now have so many more options in how I can save money, in ways that I can limit my spending. It's just, we'll get into all of that. So let, let's, let's get into all of that. So this year has been kind of a weird year for travel, obviously, um, with COVID. So <laughs> I'm going to have to base this off of like previous travel and previous years. 
So the things that matter for that is kind of where your next destination is, right? Like, so if I'm flying from Europe to Australia, that cost is gonna be way bigger than if I'm flying, say, from Athens to Rome. That already depends on how much you're gonna be spending. And usually I kind of stick to one area at a time because, you know, I can take buses, I can take trains, and that's already gonna reduce that cost a lot. Then it also obviously matters how often you move around. So say if you're moving every, you know, two weeks or so, then you're definitely gonna have higher travel costs than if you're you know, staying in one place for two to three months, which is basically what I've now started doing. I would say your average, you're looking at probably about 200 to 600 um, per month, worst case scenario, um, if you are traveling a lot and far distances. But obviously, you are in control of that. You can decide, you can budget, and you can see what you can afford and what you can't, and you don't have to go and do any of these things. You can just pick the one that's going to be the best for you and your budget. Okay, so the way that I've done this math is I'm kind of just looking at base living costs because obviously everybody will have some variable expenses. For example, things that you'll need to consider are things like health insurance, um, a cell phone provider, mobile phone provider. For me, for example, I have a lot of camera gear that I need to insure, so stuff like that isn't really going to apply to everybody and the costs are going to be different, you know, depending on what provider you go with and your personal circumstances. What you'll see now here, this is my cost breakdown of living in Bulgaria. My base living expense was about $600, which, you know, once I take into account some of the other um, small little expenses that I mentioned, that's it. Like, those are my living expenses, and the rest is really just to use for travel, going out to eat, activities, and the things that, you know, I want to do. And um, now let's look at Greece. As you can see, again, my monthly cost is less than $1,000. So. I'm already cutting my usual expenses, my base expenses, in half by living this way. Overall, this is already a much more affordable way to live. Now it does come with downsides, which we're gonna talk about. First though, we're gonna get into the um, biggest expense that you'll see, that you'll have noticed, which is your accommodation. Accommodation is gonna be the largest part of your budget, but there are some really good ways to save money even on that and you kind of get better at it the more you do this. Um, you know, I've stayed in hostels, they have private rooms, um, I'll stay in Airbnbs if the country isn't too expensive, but usually Airbnbs are too expensive for me. Now, this right here is an Airbnb, but what we've kind of done is we've created a co-living situation. And that just means that a couple of us who are living this full-time travel, continuous travel lifestyle, are living together in order to share the expense because obviously we're all watching our budgets. We all wanna keep our expenses as low as possible. So even with like my groceries included, I'm still spending less than a thousand and I have this really, really nice apartment that, do you know what? I'm gonna give you, um, I'm gonna give you guys a tour of now. Okay, so the place that I've been filming at is this bedroom that I have to myself, which is amazing. I've had to share bedrooms before, you know? It's just what you do. Um, this right here uh, are all the clothes that I'm traveling with. So, yep, you gotta travel light, which is why I don't buy a lot of clothes, which is why you'll always see me wearing the same outfits and shirts and everything. And let's go here. So, this is actually the upstairs. You can see down to the, the, the whatever bottom floor. We have this amazing balcony that I actually wanted to film on, but it's super windy up here, so yeah, it wasn't quite quite as good to film here, but these amazing views over the city. And I've got my own bathroom, which is amazing. Um, again, something you don't really often have. Um, and there's downstairs. And here we've got, whoops, we've got second bedroom and third bedroom. Those are the boys' bedrooms though, and they're probably really gross, so we're not gonna go in there. The boys have their own bathroom. Probably also gross, I'm not gonna go in there. And um, a really big kitchen, 
which we use a lot obviously because that's how we save even more money is by not going out to eat all the time so we buy most of our food for the week and just cook meals every day all day and do dishes all day every day some things just kind of stay you know here the boys are working hard <laughs> and we've got this living room and a TV which is also very exciting because it has Netflix on it and yeah, you don't always have that. <laughs> so yeah, we have lots of balconies here. Um, it's a two-story apartment. It's just absolutely incredible. Like I said, one of the nicest places that I've stayed at. Um, but again, it's only possible because there are three of us sharing the expense. Um, and basically us sitting at our laptops all day is what the reality is um, <laughs> of this lifestyle. So let's get into some of the negatives of this. All right, now that I've been outside, my hair is like <laughs> super crazy looking. Um, but yeah, let's talk about the stuff that nobody really tells you and some of the negative aspects of this lifestyle. First of all, I'm not always traveling with other people. A lot of the time I'm by myself. So it can be a really lonely kind of lifestyle. You live in an apartment by yourself. You also have to be okay with the fact that you're always planning travel, right? So basically we have this apartment for another five days and then that's it <laughs> then i'm homeless then i need to figure out where am i going next um, i need to look at you know what's going to fit into my budget how much is it going to cost to get there um, how much are apartments there how much you know is general cost of living there how long is it going to take me to get there does you know the travel to get there interfere with any of the work that i have to do so there are a lot of things to consider and you are constantly planning um, that's why it's also a lot easier to kind of stay in places for longer but bottom line you are constantly trying to budget and plan your next move and lastly you have to be really disciplined I can't tell you how difficult it is to you know be on a beautiful island and have to sit inside all day working you're not on vacation and in fact you probably tend to work more than other people because you know if you're an independent contractor like you are always looking for more ways to get money, for you know your income that next month, um, do you need more clients? Like you're constantly, constantly worrying about that, and you know so you actually end up working quite a lot. I mean, I work on Saturdays and Sundays sometimes, and yeah, I mean I was in Athens for a week before I even went outside and actually got to see the city. So it is a little bit limiting, but you know you can determine how long you want to stay. You can say you know I want to stay here longer and actually do this or I want to budget for this so you have the freedom and I think that's the reason all of us do this is the freedom um, for me it was the financial freedom and the freedom of choice of being wherever I wanted to and changing my location and scenery if I felt like it so it is tough but the freedom to me makes it all worth it I hope that this has been helpful for you and if you have any questions about this at all please pop them in the comments below and um, until next time, be good to one another, be good to our planet, and keep adventuring.